bunch of garbage anyway, um, because I understand why people are hurt. I understand why people are quick to defend Travis Scott is because he puts this persona out um, on social media in his 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 concerts and festivals and stuff. So you believe that Travis Scott is this person and you would automatically think that if something happened, Travis Scott, like he's a good dude, like he cares about me. Um, as somebody who knows a lot of industry people, they do not care about you. I, I, I really want people to understand that they don't care about you because if they did, like when we got into the whole Nike thing, Nike, did, I, clearly we know Nike does not care about us. Uh, if they did, we'd be having every shoe, every drop, but they don't. Um, Travis Scott is, he's just a regular dude and he's all, he's, he's about his career. He's going to protect himself. And so what he put up there was what somebody from his PR team told him to put out. And that kept him covered, uh, for a quote unquote response. That was not an apology. I think the problem we have right now in social media and, and, and social culture is people will try to put out an apology without saying, I'm sorry. If you go back into like all of the, the, the people in, in this, the history of this country who have made mistakes, look at their quote unquote apology and look and see how many of them actually said the words, I'm sorry. You, you're, you're hardly ever going to see it because that's a, that's a, that's a, a personal acknowledgement of responsibility and so right now what we have a lot in social media is everyone is trying to blame people when we really need to be accepting responsibility. I mean, we, we saw it all. Number one, there were t too many people there. Clearly there were too many people there and whether Travis Scott encouraged it or not, there were way too many people there. And so once their team recognized that there were too many people there, no one did a thing about it. Um, mm -hmm. The, 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 the water stations. I mean, I've, you know, I've been at events or worked events, you know, Steve Aoki came here to St. Louis and, uh, they were, he himself was well aware that people, you know, they party hard when they're at, you know, his, his concerts, they're, 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 uh, they're on Molly They're you know, so they're quick to get dehydrated. Every person that came through the door was handed a bottle of water. Because they knew what could happen, but they were so ill prepared. And so for me, I want to get off of the blame game. Like who's the blame? I, I want to understand like who is responsible for the failure of the, the safety of the people there. Um, granted, yes, People themselves have a, uh, they need to accept their own responsibility. Like Cameron, like shout out to you, Cameron. I mean, it's like you're a, a, a festival athlete. Like you knew you needed to be hydrated and you knew you needed to like eat before you went. Like, you know, th that's being smart, but not everybody knows that. And so I'm, I haven't thrown a fan festival, but like, Knowing what could happen, I will want to make sure that at my event that I've got things put in place for people. You know, uh, how many people do I need to hire to with security? Uh, how many medics do I need to have? Like, I've seen sm smaller events with like two or three thousand people that have more medics there than this this festival. Mm -hmm. it, it it is this is so it, it's so crazy to me. Um, but I think right now the huge focus everybody it, it's a lot of people i'm sorry i won't say everybody a lot of people um die hard fans are 100 percent defending the character of travis scott when number one they don't even know him um number two uh like we're so quick to defend somebody's character instead of honoring the, the victims and making the victims feel whole and, and healed again. And so I think um, part of that, uh, we need to kind of make sure that we focus on that while we talk about these other things. And so um, that's like 
five minutes of my 45 minutes to an hour that I had prepared. <laughs> no, that's good, man. Look, no, I, I appreciate that. I, I knew that you would have, you know, some, some real insight, man. I appreciate that. You don't even speak on space as much. So I appreciate you even coming up for real. Um, but I think you're right. You know, I think that we need to make sure that there's emphasis on the victims here, you know, and that they receive the love. They, they're the ones that need the outpouring of love. Right. I mean, Travis Scott is still rich. Travis Scott, you know, is going to keep on pushing, you know, and go on to the next scene. But these people really lost family members like, you know, like for real, like it's 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 devastating to even think about. Chef, what's what, what's on your mind, bro? Uh, just to piggyback off of Juan said, yeah, uh, Travis, he doesn't care about you. All you are to him is a merch sale, a ticket sale, an L on sneakers, or a raffle entry that he didn't even pay attention to. Because if he cared about you, everybody would have got them uh, fragment Travis highs and lows, and I wouldn't have to pay 1500 for my pair. That's all. <laughs> but, I feel it. But yeah, I think uh, he, man, this this whole festival, he he ruined a huge bag because he's not going to be able to have Astro World back in Houston because when it comes to the top 1%, the only thing they love more than making money is not losing money. And with the lawsuits that's going to be coming their way, it's these cities are not going to, and these arenas or different venues is not going to be worth the risk. And with it was this, I mean, it was just such a safety hazard because of, Allegedly, there was someone in the crowd drugged up, stabbing people with a needle. Now, it could have been yeah. much worse than that. I'm in Texas. We kid that thing on us. If that person that was drugged up had that on them and was using that instead of a needle, it could have been much worse. And everybody's packed up like pigs in the pig pen and with nowhere to go. And it's just, it's it was just... It was too much. It was poor planning. And it was just, it, it shouldn't have happened, to be honest. It should not have happened. I, I agree, man. I think, you know, it, it's funny that you mentioned that. You actually made a really good point. He's a huge liability at this point for venues. Like, I mean, what venue is going to want to accept that? You know, like, what what kind of premiums for insurance do you oh, have to put out there now? Wait, you said what now? Say, say one more time. I thought that somebody. I thought somebody had a hot mic. Lex, I think you got a hot mic, brother. I'm not seeing that you. Um, oh. that you muted. Did you want to go ahead and jump in? Oh, what's up? Oh what's yeah, good, bro? what's up? Um, first off, cond condolences to the people who died. Um, second, you got to excuse me because I'm driving right now. Um, second, uh, I've been to a Travis concert, and the main thing that stood out to me when I went, I was in the, I guess, general admission. I wasn't in front of the stage, so. The main thing to me was people are actually paying for people to come. And he encourages people to come on the stage and jump off the stage and crowd surf. To me, that's insane. You're paying $200. You're already dehydrated. You are uh, potentially dehydrated. You're already tired from jumping up and down for two hours. And you got to support somebody like crowd surfing over you. That's insane to me. Number two, I found it interesting that since this happened, I've been seeing people bringing up there was a lawsuit, I want to say, in, like, New York. Uh, he encouraged the kid to jump from, like, the balcony of a ballroom, and the kid got paralyzed. Yeah, broke his legs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so that was crazy to me. Um, but once again, I just want to say condolences to the people. Like Juan said, Travis doesn't care about any of us. We really got to stop, like, idolizing these people. I couldn't. I, I agree completely, bro. Like, yeah, he's he's put some people in some real danger, man. I appreciate that insight for real. Um, Juan, I saw your hand up, and then uh, a black. I'm gonna go over to you too, bro. Juan, what's good? Yeah, I think that's it's really important to talk about that. You know what's gonna change? I mean, we go back to what was the Who concert, December third, nineteen seventy nine. Um, I feel like I'm doing a sneaker fetish video because I'm coming with some knowledge right now. <laughs> um, but uh, the Who, when they did their concert uh, in 1978, 1979, there were, I want to say, five or six, or it might have been 11, people who actually died during that concert. Um, you know, 
if you go back and look at all the things that changed after that happened, I mean, uh, I mean, it was because it was in Cincinnati. Number one, yeah, the families, you know, got one lawsuits, um, but it didn't bring uh, their family members back. Um, it changed how they did, you know, concerts because I think at the time it was no assigned seating. Then they changed it to assigned assigned seating, and then I think they, uh, I mean, it was like twenty years later they relaxed that, um, and but made it to where there was a certain amount of feet uh, in between people. But uh, I, I mean, you look at even the the band members now talking about the you know the effect that it had on them and everything, but like their their response was immediate as compared to what we saw from, from Travis Scott. Um, but I think that's, it's important to kind of talk about how that's going to change, uh, things going forward. Um, and like how people actually themselves, you know, people are still going to buy Travis Scott merch. People are still going to buy Travis Scott shoes. I mean, we know how sneaker culture is right now. There's, there's a bag to be made by flipping his shoes. And so, um, and what's sick enough, probably the price will go higher um, because mm -hmm. we, we kind of see how that happens in these instances. Um, maybe they'll go higher, but I think we put people on this God-like pedestal. And so we, we, we make all these people uh, famous and we support them and we expect that, you know, some sort of level of respect and return and, and, and we're not going to get it. And so it will be interesting to kind of see how things change uh, as we go. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, man. You know, we we expect so much. I mean, you know, we, we talk about Nike, you know, we talk about how we expect fair and equitable treatment from a sneaker company. And it's like at the end of the day, they're a conglomerate looking to make the most profit that they possibly can, you know? So like, it's the same ideology with that. I totally agree. Um, Phenom black, a black elf in sweatpants. My brother, what's going on? What's good, bro. I just want to make sure. Is my mic clear and stuff? Oh yeah. Yeah. Loud and clear. Cool. 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 So, um, first of all, I appreciate you giving me a moment to speak or whatever, but, I guess for me, like, there are moments throughout your celebrity that kind of define you as a person. They'll define your legacy. And this was not one of those moments. This was not, this, this was basically an opportunity for Travis to show who he was and how much he actually did care about his fans. Because I heard somebody say earlier, like we saw kids at these concerts, like, let's not get it twisted, dog. Let's, Travis's fan base is kids. It is young adults in their mid-20s and then younger. It's kids. Like, my man held a concert on fucking Fortnite. It's kids. So he knew who his audience was. He knew who was coming to that show. And I, I just find it irresponsible that you would see an ambulance in the crowd. I even saw something, I don't know how true this is, that people were dancing on the ambulance. Like, what the fuck was going on at that point where you didn't stop the show? Like, you know, you know, jokes aside, like all of us have seen fucking Selena and she did that concert where people almost died in the front and she paused it. I know that's a movie. It's based on life. But Travis has way more pull than that. He has way more power than that, like someone else said. So for him to be like, cut the music, cut on the lights. Yo, if you see somebody on the ground near you, help them up. But he didn't do that. He kept performing. I don't know if it feeds into like his whole like dark side or whatever he's trying to present, that, that whole shtick that he got going. I understand that. I fuck with Travis. I like his music. But he had a responsibility at this point. He's a fucking adult. He's not a kid. So he had a responsibility to do something. And I know people are saying he might have did something, but I just don't feel like he did enough. And I, I just, I feel like this could have been avoided. I do for, I've been doing photography at concerts for like 10 years. I've been to Governor's Ball. I've been to a bunch of big ass festivals. More people than was there. I have never experienced eight people dying at a fucking concert bro from being dehydrated or going into cardiac arrest like and this it was kids like as a kid my parents used to take me to concerts i i went to see wu-tang when i was a kid i went to see dmx i saw that hard night life tour mm. like but my dad was always with me right so to be like kids can't go to these concerts no man you know you got kids that your fans 
kids are going to go to these shows. You might have saw a five-year-old, but you might not have seen his dad there or his bro- older brother or uncle or something. I'm, I'm, I would hope there had been some responsibility on that part. Not saying there always is. But we know his fan base is kids. And he fucked up big. I really don't know what the pushback or the fallout is truly going to be of this, right? But I also agree with what Juan said. I think them shoes about to triple in price now. And that's the dark side of like having these cult followings and just having people who having this type of demand for your product you know the darker shit gets the more people want it and are willing to pay to have it so it's uh, anybody defending him honestly is in my opinion is just tripping they are hard ass tripping and they need to get it together that shit is not responsible at all to be defending this man for some mosh pit shit I've been at grunge shows where people have dove into crowds and stuff like that I ain't never seen nobody die and they be wilding out at them shows. Like, you go on them van tours and shit like that, them people be wilding the fuck out. But they take responsibility there too, man. Like, this this was this was bad. This was really bad on his part. And that apology was trash. Yeah. That was the laziest piece of trash I've ever seen. And that, that's all I got, man. I no, I got it. you, bro. No, listen, no, all good points. And, you know, so I just want to, I want to follow up with that statement. So, so according to the police, um, they said that the reason why they didn't want Travis to actually stop the show and cut the lights on was because they were afraid that it was going to incite a riot, like a real riot. Like once they stopped the show, the, the kids were just going to really start wilding out and going crazy. So that's why they wanted to keep the show going. But I, I don't know. You know, I feel like that's a big what if. And for what was already happening in that moment, shit i might have just took the risk of stopping the show you know to make sure that the people that needed to be taken care of were being taken care of instead of being raged on and trampled on with the show continuing on you know so i get it's a tough choice to make in the moment but i mean my goodness it, it can't get no worse than it's all than it already is right now can it so i don't know i won't get too far off on that tangent shake my brother what's going on Oh my gosh, son, I've been waiting, I've been waiting to get this mic. <laughs> Got you up so, finally. So that's what I was that's what I was just about to, I was gonna say that like 20 minutes ago. Like, yo, like I've I've been on tours, you know what I'm saying, in the eighties, the nineties, even now, you know, I've seen it. And it's like it's way different than than what y'all think. And one and I just wanna know, I wanna say this one million percent. I'm definitely not advocating for Travis or standing up for him. Um, I just, I just think like everybody needs to really look at it for really what it is. And when you, you know, we in the blame, we in the cancel culture and, and, and the blame game. Right. I think at some point, I think Travis is going to do something for the families. He's going to do something at some point. I think his, uh, his apology was a knee jerk reaction. It was kind of like he was feeling the pressure that he had to get something out real quick. So he just hurry up. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? He just hurry up and threw something out. You know, but on those tours, man, you know, it's like it's very difficult. Like people think like, oh, you know, Jay-Z saw me like, yo, it's really hard, you know, to see people. You know, I'm talking about in the crowd when you on that stage, you know, it's, you know, Travis got his security. You know, there's the venue security and then there's the tour security. Right. So it's 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 totally it's, it's just so many different components behind this whole thing you know i know chase chase b i know travis i had travis out here in milwaukee i know i know all of them dudes man and i'm just telling you that when you on when you on those tours right and then and then look at it like this right travis got travis got bread he can't come out and say yo i fucked up it's my fault right because at the end of the day he don't want to get sued that's what it's all about at, at the end of the day and then like the families out there that lost you know that that, that died you know my super duper condolences i hope the number stays at eight i hope it don't go to nine i hope it's to just stay right where it is i mean even eight is too many but they're like on the back of those tickets man like like people don't people don't read like when they buy these tickets it absolves the venues of any liability like so it absolves them from you know what, what y'all think about to happen you know it absolves them of that 
and like and like I heard the other brothers say, you know, he was at, he went to the hard knock life and stuff like that. Like my son, like one of my one of my good friends manages um Playboy Cardi and Cardi's coming to Milwaukee and I'm taking my son. My son's twenty two years old. Like I take him to all of you know, like all of these concerts. At some point, like, you know, a ten year old, fourteen years old, bro, I mean, that's my this is just my opinion. That shit is irresponsible, you know, for somebody to let somebody take their kid. And I know nobody knew that this was going to happen, but still, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, with these, these guys is diving into these crowds. It's just not Travis, you know, like, like Uzi's doing it, you know, Trippy doing it. They all doing it. They all diving into these crowds. They all got all of these young fans, all of these, you know, these teenagers and people saying that Travis don't care that you got them right. He don't care about us. Cause we all old. He don't give a fuck about us. All his fans is fucking, 10 years old to 22. Them the ones that's really buying his tickets. So he gives a fuck what us old niggas is saying, right? Yep. And, 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 an and another thing I'm, I'm going to tell you is that when I went, to, I went and saw Dave Chappelle like uh, recently, you know, like when he made his, his last little run. And, and, and when I went there, I'm going to tell you something, man. The, this is the problem. It, it, it wasn't enough security because people not going back to work. So if people not going back to work, it's not enough venue security. But but with that being said, the world got to open back up. But I, I felt like Dave Chappelle shouldn't have had his, his shit because it took two hours to get into the venue because they only had eight people making you check your phones. So it, wow. it was crazy. So it, it wasn't it wasn't enough people. Then when I went in the inside, it was probably 10, 10, 10 securities, one ambulance, and it was 20,000 people. So... It's just like it that's just the times that we are that we live in right now. Like so it's kinda I mean, I hate to say it, but it's kinda dangerous to be going to these shows nowadays. And I'm I'm gonna say this and cause I don't wanna talk talk y'all ear out too much, but Travis is gonna survive, man, because People don't realize, like, back in the day, you know, uh, when we was on tour, we had some people get killed, you know, at a, at a, and I mean, and when I say we, I mean, Run DMC, we had some people get killed at a tour, you know, on tour while we was while we was performing. And, you know, like nobody, you know, it's just like that's just an old part of history now. Like nobody talks about it. I was at the show in um in Detroit when and when um NWA we was on tour with them and the police told them don't do fuck the police. And they did fuck the police and niggas started fighting and beating up. So what I'm saying is like. Travis going to survive because this is America, man. And the one thing we love in America, what we love, we love a comeback. We love a comeback story. He, he you know, he going to do something. Like I said, he going to do something for the families, you know, at some point. You know, he just probably, you know, trying to figure it out, you know, exactly what he's going to do. And as far as I heard the other brother say uh, that Nike was responsible, I, I just spit my water out. Like, he's just, he's just an endorsement. <laughs> endorse, he just endorsed God in him. Like, he's just an ass, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's not, like, they don't have no liability. They have no dog in this fight other than they have a deal with him. You know what I'm saying? That deal's going to continue because they 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 dumb, but they not stupid. They're not going to get rid of Travis. All You know, they took the merch down the same way they took Kobe's shoes down, and then they slowly start. Like, everything's going to go back to normal. And like I said, I'm definitely not advocating for him, but like I said, I just want y'all to understand that when you in the middle of them show, like, I totally agree with the police. I said that in the beginning. I said, if he would have stopped that show, I, and regardless to the circumstances, because the, it, maybe 10, 20 people knew or 100 people knew, but them other 6,000 in the back, they didn't know what was happening. So mm -hmm. if he would have stopped that show, I promise you, it would have been way worse than whatever we think it is right now. So I think I'm not saying he should. He Maybe he could have did something, you know, maybe he could have said, yo, you know, check the ambulance. But. I know at his shows, people are always falling out. Then they get, you know, they get carried out. And that's a part of they raging. They like to see that shit. Like somebody fall out and then they get, they cheer louder. Ah! You know what I'm saying? But that's just a part of his, his whole thing. And like I said, Travis going to survive. My condolences to the family, but that's just the world we live in. They shouldn't have had to show it. Wasn't, if it wasn't enough security, if it wasn't enough ambulances, he, they shouldn't have had the show. And the next one he do, it ain't going to be like that. They're probably going to have everybody walking through metal detectors and say, you only could take your phone in. And they're going to have more water. You know what I'm saying? They're going to use it as a learning moment, as a teaching moment to get better for the next time. But yeah, man, I mean, I'm, I mean, like I said, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, I don't have a dog in the fight, but Travis is going to survive. That's all I want to say, my brother. No, that's real, Shake. No, I look, I appreciate it. That's a lot of insight that you just gave us. And as someone that's seen firsthand, you know, even back in the run DMC days, I mean, this ain't new, right? Like this yeah. type of reaction. I'm in Houston. 
So I've been to damn near all his shows in Houston as well as all the Astro World Fest and stuff. And um, this year was different. I, I'll definitely say that. Uh, if you look or if you look at the video, not look at the videos. Um, let me start up. One thing different that I will say I peep walking around the grounds was that there was a barricade that was separating the front, the front end of the stage from the back. And I feel like that's low key. That's where all the shit happened. Like all the shit happened up front right there. And that's because niggas couldn't, niggas was packed in there like sardines. And that's where all that, all that shit happened. Uh, if you go to concerts, you already know, um, I'm sorry if I'm, I don't do this a lot, so I'm probably stumbling over words and everything. No, you good. Um, uh, if you go to his concerts, you know they can get really just like hype. Even just any concert, like anybody does it, I feel like even if Kanye do a concert or something, it would be some type of raging or some type of hypeness in there. Um, so that's just what kind of just comes with it. Um, I hate, I got to say this, I hate that there was kids in there. As somebody that goes to Travis Scott concerts, I would never allow my 16, maybe 16, maybe 17, but anything under that, I would never allow them to go to the show. And even as a parent, knowing what he's, his history, I would have questioned that. Not like, I mean, yeah, I would have just questioned that in general. Like, do I really want my child here, let alone in VIP, like in the shit. And like, I believe his VIP was called No Bystanders. And I feel like that was fucking crazy within itself because of what mm. happened um but um what was i trying to say i'm sorry uh i think it's it's hella crazy he paused it i was behind the barrier we didn't know what the fuck was going on we actually saw the girl go up onto the thing and uh the camera operator and kind of like pull him or whatever and everybody's pointing but we just assumed that she was low-key trying to like rage or some shit like some other shit like oh somebody up there because niggas do that at the Travis shows you just don't know what to really expect um he paused maybe three to four times uh one time it was at least for like a minute or so minute or two for sure for sure like trying to get people to come through or like make way I think more so the crowd um Everybody's saying like mosh pit etiquette. I don't think the crowd knew any mosh pit etiquette because it was nothing but kids that have never been to a festival. Half of these kids probably, this was probably their first concert, like point blank period. So niggas don't know what to really just expect. Um, and I think that's, that's the main thing. When you go to concerts in general and depending on who you're going to see, know what you're going to get into. Uh, oh boy, he was saying how he had been to hella festivals and concerts and he knows how to hydrate. I was on the same shit. I was hydrating all day before. Like, just because I didn't know if one, I was gonna end up in the shit or, or not. But I knew at the end of the day, I was gonna be at a festival on my feet, possibly in this heat all day type shit. Um, so I prepared. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't a lot of water stations i even like after the concert niggas is drenched i asked the officer where's the water and the officer kind of like side-eyed me i asked a couple officers where the water was and they kind of was like on some get the fuck out of here like hurry up move type shit and i kind of felt like that was kind of odd because you know your fan base niggas is raging for real for real like you should definitely have the water on deck like at least just hella waters as niggas just walk out um, I didn't see any bodies. I didn't see any violence or anything. I was right. Uh, the area that I was in, niggas was moshing. It was a pit right there. Uh, the pits that I usually be in don't be no fighting or anything like that. I don't know if that's to say that maybe the Houston crowd is a, a less violent crowd or not even to say that it doesn't go on. But where I am, I don't really see that. Like, it's hype. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, niggas get stuff like whenever shit happens. But it's never been just, I don't think it's been to this extent. Like, we've never been, I've never been trapped or felt like I was trapped. And I feel like all those people, even in an inside venue, I've never felt like I felt trapped. And all those people up there, I, I just really, really, really feel for them. Because that shit was crazy. Like, I'm a real concert yeah. goer. Like, I go to more, con I work at House of Blues. I probably go to more concerts than 80% of people in here. And that was definitely odd. Like, I know I'll probably get slack for this. But it, it's, I had the time of my life, and I feel weird saying that I had the time of my life and niggas died. Like, that's one thing that I'm kind of just kind of 
trying to process. Like, I don't know how to really just feel like, I don't know. Like, cause I'm a stand. Like, and I don't want to sit right. here and defend them on anything, but yeah, but that's my time. I know I'm probably talk everybody's there off, but yeah, that's no, yeah, no, nah, that's good. No, look, I appreciate it. I, I love the firsthand accounts from people that were there, so that means a lot. You coming up and giving us your firsthand account. Um, yeah. and I think a lot of people are in a weird space right now because a lot of people are Travis Scott fans, yep. you know, and so dealing with the irresponsibility. Uh, mixed in with the fact that you know you truly have enjoyed this man's journey. Facts. You like his music. You feel like he got fucking robbed for the Grammy Award for all that shit. world. <laughs> you know, like I get it. You know what I'm saying? I definitely understand where you're coming from. So now we 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 appreciate that account, bro, for real. Um, so I see. Uh, I think I got Cameron up next, and then Manny. I see you too, bro. So Cameron, what's on your mind? I just want to say, um. I hated that I didn't mention this before because it was just like, oh, like, are you good? And just like think about it. You know, I kind of like am good, but not really good because like it's not every day you just see a dead body just like on the ground and just like reading because I was just like scrolling and reading through like Reddit and stuff like that. Like even the medical staff weren't trained apparently. Like I remember just like walking past, like seeing people like passed out and now realizing that that was probably a dead body. And dudes, like, in the red vest, I would assume, like, they were the medical staff were just, like, asking for help and screaming that they didn't even know what was going on or how to do it. Wow. And it's just, like, I'm CPR, like, certified. And, like, the worst thing, like, as CP, like, being CPR certified is the biggest fear is you actually, like, having to use it one day. 